Hi everybody and welcome back to Portsmouth this week on the Chef's Corner. We are at the Bridge Street Bistro and Wine Bar in Portsmouth and you're saying, what's that? The reason why you may not know it, and you will soon, is because there was a big name change and a grand opening in June of 2013 at, um, at this place over here. And joining us is the chef and owner of the Bridge Street Bistro and Wine Bar, Stefan Mayu. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Now, you do know the name of the Café Maribel, uh, which was around for, what, 20? 22 years. 22 years, yes. and you decided to make a name change, an environment change, uh, big changes. Yes. So yes. tell us about the change. Well, you know, after 22 years, we felt it was time to uh, do something a little different, uh, kind of freshen up the place a little bit. And uh, also we introduced a new concept uh, with a wine bar down in the downstairs dining room. Which is where we are right Which now. Which is where we are sitting absolutely here right now. Uh, and, uh, and then upstairs, the main dining room, uh, we haven't made too many changes, just, um, you know, carpeting and a fresh coat of paint. and. Uh, and we pretty much kept the same menu for the for the uh, the dining room upstairs, and here at the wine bar we've introduced a um, a smaller you know we call it the hors d'oeuvre menu smaller plates, you know I think people want um, now nowadays they don't necessarily want to go out to dinner for three hours and have a four course meal you know they want to be able to sample all kinds of different dishes so uh, this is where we decided to open the wine the wine bar. Um, along with a nice selection of wine as well, so right. it's been it's been it's been a good change for us. And we'll talk about the different sections of the restaurant in a second. But off air, you were telling me a funny story um, that uh, you it's a bistro. It's a bistro um, yes. with a T at the end. Tell us that story. It's spelled funny. with a T. Yes, not to be not, not not too many people in this country are aware of the fact that bistro actually spelled right away has a T, because it comes from the French uh, word bistrotier which is the name of the owner of the bistro. And the funny story is, uh, on the last night for Cafe Mirabel, we had a sign outside uh, stating that this, this is what, this is, was our, our last night for Cafe Mirabel, reopening in June under the Bridge Street Bistro and Wine Bar with a T, and 10 minutes later, somebody walking by can erase the T off the board. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, I wish I could have had a few words with that person and explain That's to them funny. that it wasn't a spelling mistake on our part. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, well, let's talk about the, the different parts of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. We are in the uh, wine bar, mm -hmm. and um, originally this was a dining room, and you've changed into really a beautiful, comfy, really cute place. Tell, tell us about the That's what it is. Downstairs. Yeah, under Cafe Mirabel, it was like a, a smaller dining room uh, we use mostly for um, uh, private functions, or uh, you know, if we only had a few reservations, we would sit downstairs. So we completely renovated the whole place. Um, we put like a wine, you know, we call it a wine bar, but it's actually a wine counter. You know, we don't have mixed drink or anything behind the bar. It's only a wine service. We have some nice coolers in the background here. And people just walk in and uh, we have the feel of the bar without, it's more like a quaint little place. And uh, people can just come in, have a couple of glasses of wine in a quiet corner and uh, enjoy, enjoy themselves for the night. Or they can walk outside on a nice, nice weather, we also have a little outdoor patio, which is kind of an extension of the wine bar that way. So um, it's been it's been a fun and uh, nice change for us. And then down here, um, you're serving well, the smaller plates, as you mentioned, the hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, the hors d'oeuvres. You know, it's it's typical thing. You know, we call it we don't call it tapas because everybody calls it tapas. Right. Uh, the French name is hors d'oeuvre. So it's a smaller portion, and we can have it. On the menu, you can have it in two different portions, like a, like a sharing portion would be bigger size, you can share with two or three friends. Or if you just want a sample, it's a smaller portion, like a one by two by type of thing. So people really enjoy the, or appreciate the fact that they can, we have that option as well. And uh, the wine, uh, we have a nice selection. You know, we have over 21 wines on our wine list that has price under seven, seven or under. So, you know, we, have, we still have a few uh, wines from France and California, but we're really all over the map now. We have wines from, we offer wines from Chile, Spain, Italy, South Africa. Um, so it's really a nice way to, you know, and those are good wines, you yeah, know. And affordable. People, and affordable. Nice. You know, we thought people would be concerned about the fact that, wow, it's five, six, seven dollar wine, what are they serving? But those are actually excellent wine. Win from the South Street and wine has been helping us building that list. And uh, that's what he that's that that's what he does on as his shop. You know, it's wine. He offers wine for the table, not the seller. So this is what we're trying to do here. 
Now, if your customers miss the Cafe Mirabelle, um, a feel for it, upstairs is They'll feel right at home up there, won't they? Correct. Tell we us just, about the dining room upstairs. Yeah, the dining room upstairs, um, you know, we did something on the chimney. We kind of covered the whole chimney with a slate um, uh, slate stone. So it's very, uh, you know, we wanted, we knew we were not doing major changes. So we wanted to have like a Y effect upstairs. And I think uh, we, uh, we accomplished this with the chimney. And then just coat, I mean, fresh coat of paint and carpet. And uh, so we didn't do too many changes because we, we really wanted to keep the... Uh, uh, all the customers, I mean, people have been coming to us for 20 years. We didn't want to really shock them too much. Right. So we tried, you know, we kept everything the same. Uh, same as the menu. The menu, you know, upstairs is pretty much where we were serving at Cafe Mirabelle. So, um, so we try, you know, we're keeping the, you know, the Cafe Mirabelle feel upstairs. And down here, we're trying to attract a younger crowd uh, that just want to be able to go out on a Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday night and, and, and enjoy themselves. Exactly, yeah. and then um, outside you have the courtyard. A small courtyard um, it used to be my garden, and uh, so we decided to uh, uh, take it down and put uh, some tables and chairs. We have about twelve, ten to twelve seats outside. It's it's really a nice way to um, spend. A lot of people that have you know I've had dinner there. Uh, they, they're telling us it's like being in in Europe, being in France. You know, a courtyard, especially seven eight uh, at night time. You know, when it's it's very pleasant out there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, summertime, you can't beat it. It's Absolutely. fantastic. You've got to have it. So um, we have the feel of the restaurant, and as we do on Chef's Corners, we have uh, our chefs prepare a signature dish for us, and we happen to have one right here. It's, uh, it smells amazing. Um, tell us about what we've got today. Yes, for um, I prepared this morning, a. Um, it's called a, a seafood bouillabaisse. This is our, one of our signature dish. It's been on the menu for 20 years. People won't let me let me take it off the menu. And what it is, it's uh, we start with a uh, tomato lobster saffron broth, a bouillon, and then to that we had some local seafood, uh, whatever it's available. Uh, today we had some mussels, local sea scallops, shrimp, and a little uh, piece of salmon that's buried underneath here. <laughs> and um, along with that, we're serving a couple of canapes. We have a garlic saffron canopy, and. Uh, what we call a rui, which is a um, roasted red pepper jalapenos. It's a little bit more spicy, so it's a nice combination to have. And people just dip that in the broth along with the seafood. And, um, and with it, all our dishes come with a, a side of uh, uh, vegetable of the day and also the, my potato pancake that uh, I've been making for uh, close to 20 years now. Uh, people won't let me take it off the menu. So this is one of our signature dish here. So um, depending on the season, you might have different um, seafood. Different seafood. Um, in, in you know, there. this over the weekend, I was able to get some local monkfish, so I added that to it. Um, you know, sometimes some fresh lobster meat. Uh, so I try to play around with what's available. Tell us the origin of this. Um, you were telling me this off camera as well um, in France, way bouillabaisse. back in the day. Yes, that's right. Way back in the day, you know, the original bouillabaisse from the south of France, and uh, way way back then, uh, the story started where you know the fishermen would go out and catch all kinds of, of fish and all the unwanted ones you know nobody wanted they didn't know what they were or they were not pricey enough to sell so the fishermen would keep them for themselves and they would have a big cauldron or pot on the on the on the, on, the, on the, um, by the fishing vessel and they would just throw all this unwanted shellfish and fish and then they started adding, you know, some wine and local. South of France, we had some nice tomatoes and basil, garlic, olives. They would add all kinds of spices and vegetable to it and just boil that, simmer it for hours, hours. So that's where the name comes. Bouillabaisse is in two words. First is bouille, means to boil, and abaisse is like the unwanted. So combine these two words together, you know, with bouillabaisse. So the original dish is, you know, something that nobody really wanted. So, and now it's probably the most popular dish in French menus. That's amazing. And um, this is uh, your uh, version of the potato pancake, which is like the most popular thing that you have. Yes, it is. It's, um, you know, uh, shredded potatoes by hand, and it's mixed with fresh garlic, rosemary, and thyme, a little salt and pepper. And I use a big, you know, 10 inch fry pan and I just pack them in there and you flip them, bake them in the oven for 20 minutes and then you slice it like a pie and I serve that, you know, people love it. And of course you can have some great dishes like this without a little uh, vino, a little wine little here. Wine. Tell us what you have uh, today. Well, we have a nice French rosé 
and it's very appropriate not only for the dish, the bouillabaisse, but also for the, for the for this time of the year. You know, summertime people want some cool white wine rosé, and the rosés are really have been one of the um, best sellers here at, at the at the bistro. Uh, it's nice and refreshing. Um, you know, French people. I, I drink this before water. You know, it's so <laughs> nice and light and refreshing. So yeah, it's looks- a nice way to to have it. So, um, and uh, you do desserts too, I'm assuming? And Correct, yeah, we make our own desserts here at, at the restaurant. Um, and I guess I could have made a, a profiterole for dessert. This is the other very popular. They'll have to come over. They'll have to it. come over and, and check it. We have the profiterole, the creme brulee. I make a nice apple clafouti, a uh, gluten free chocolate cake with an orange rum sauce, a couple of homemade sorbets. And, um, and all the desserts are made. You know, the desserts are actually recipes from my uh, two grandmothers in the family uh, who were bakers themselves uh, and own a bakery. So a lot of these recipes were handed out to me. So that's what I'm, I'm doing here. That's uh, terrific. Yeah. So this is what I've got from our interview today. That um, originally when you were at Cafe Mirabelle, if you were into that restaurant, which you've been around for over 20 years, you definitely, there are a lot of people who come over. You're not going to be disappointed. You're going to get the same service, the same type of food. But if you want something like some a little wine, a couple of small dishes, you're going to have that's your new addition type of thing. Right. So you're serving to a couple of different areas there, and I, I, it'll serve everyone nicely, I think. Yeah, absolutely. We're, you know, we're keeping the old, and, and, we, and we added the, the new, the more hip and younger um, aspect of it. So. And you'll be open, um, what are the We open, uh, well, it's probably easier to say when we close. We close Sunday night and Mondays, and we're serving lunch and dinner. Uh, four days a week, five days a week. Lunch is Tuesday through Friday and dinner Tuesday through Saturday. And we also offering a Sunday brunch where we uh, features uh, French crepes. I mean, you know, you gotta have, you've gotta have some kind of crepes when you open a French restaurant. Absolutely. So that's, that's where we, we have that at brunch time, uh, so a nice selection of, of uh, sweet and savory crepes, along with some egg dishes, eggs Benedict and some uh, scrambled eggs and French toast. So. Uh, a nice, a nice assortment of uh, selection for Sunday brunch. Sounds great. Yeah, got to check it out, everybody. Remember the Bridge Street Bistro with a T at the end, and wine bar right here in Portsmouth. You won't be disappointed.